Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem optimal partition of a string. We're given a string s and we want to partition it into one or more substrings such that every single substring has no duplicate characters. I feel like this problem description could have been a little bit shorter if they just told you that, but usually the problem descriptions are trying to confuse you. So that's kind of a skill you have to learn. We want to return the minimum number of substrings in such a partition. Now, they do tell us that there are actually multiple ways to do it sometimes, and we don't really care about which way we do it. There's a way to, given this string, partition it into four substrings like this, where you can see that none of these substrings have duplicate characters. This doesn't have any duplicates, neither does this, neither does this, and neither does this. But we can also do it a different way like this. This one is also four substrings. We don't care about which way we do it. We just wanna know what is the minimum number of substrings that we can take this guy and break it up into. And if it happens to be four, well, four is just gonna be the value we return in that case. So given the input string, how can we solve this problem? It's not super crazy. Let's just try starting at the beginning to create a substring at the beginning. We have A so far. Let's keep going. Let's try to make it as big as we possibly can. Let's try to be a little bit greedy here. Go to the second character, it's a B. So since we don't have any duplicates so far, we can continue. Let's now look at the third character, it's an A. It happens to be a duplicate. We already have an A over here, but the question is how do we detect this? How do we know if there's a duplicate? Because in this case, every time we introduce a new character, we possibly have to compare it to every character that we previously saw which actually wouldn't be too bad because we know that the input string is only gonna have lowercase a through lowercase z. That's only 26 characters. So any substring can't possibly have more than 26 characters because by definition at that point, it would have a duplicate. But there is a kind of a nicer way to solve this problem, which is to use a hash set. It's a little bit more efficient, even though the big O time complexity will not change as I will talk about in just a second. But think about it like this, our current substring should be contained in the hash set. So we will be able to look at the new character A and know in constant time, is it one of the characters we have already seen in the current substring? So in this case, it is. So we say, well, this is a single substring and this is gonna be part of a different substring. We don't care about the characters themselves. We would just take our current counter, AKA our result and set it probably equal to one at this point. And then we would just continue the algorithm. Here we have C, here we have A, it's a duplicate. So we say this is a string. Now we're starting a new substring here. We have A, we have B. B is not a duplicate, but this third A here is. So this is a substring and this is a substring. We have four substrings and that's what we return since we are just iterating through the input string and we are maybe checking if a character is in a hash set. Well, that's just an O of one operation anyway. So the overall time complexity becomes big O of N for this problem. And by the way, the memory complexity is not big O of N. Yes, we're using another data structure, a hash set, but what's gonna be the maximum size of that hash set? Well, like I said, we can't possibly have more than 26 characters in a substring. So actually the memory complexity is going to be constant. It's gonna be big O of one, not too bad. Now let's code it up. So the first thing I'm gonna do here is create our hash set, which is gonna tell us of the current characters in our substring. These are those characters. They're gonna be contained in the hash set. Please ignore the leak code syntax highlighting. It's going crazy again. I refreshed, so hopefully it won't happen again. But before we start iterating through the characters in the substring, before we do that, let's also remember to declare our result. I'm initially gonna set it to zero, but in just a second, I'm gonna change it. I wanna show you why we're not gonna be initializing it to zero. So that's why I'm gonna set it there for now. As we go through every single character, there's really two cases. Either this character is already in the current hash set, which would be this if C is in current set, else it's not in the current set. If it already is in the current set, what would we want to do? Well, that means we now are starting a new substring. So we should probably increment our result. And also we should probably reset the current set to an empty set. So we'll say current set is equal to an empty set. And now to that current set, we want to add this 
character that we just saw. Now, the else case if this character is not already in the current substring, well, let's just go ahead and add it to the current set so that we know if we see it again in the future. We don't have to increment the result and we don't have to reassign this. So given that these two conditions have a commonality between them, this line of code here, we can actually get rid of this else condition and just have this line by itself out here. We know it's gonna run regardless of which condition would execute. So that's what we're going to do. We don't even need an else case anymore. And then after all that's done, we're just gonna return the result. The only problem here is that for the example that we saw, if we have an input string like ABA, what this current code would do since the result is initialized to zero, it would say, let's iterate through character by character. We have an A that's not been seen before. Now we have a B, so this is our substring so far. Now we get a third character, A. This is the duplicate. So now our if statement would execute. We'd increment the result to one and then reassign the current set. The problem here is now our loop would terminate. We got to the last A, but we didn't really go any further. So at this point, we would return a result of one. That's not what we wanna do. We wanna return a result of two. And since we know that the input string is actually always going to be non-empty, we are safe to say that our result is initially gonna be set to one. So that's what we're gonna do here. And now I'm gonna go ahead and run the code to make sure that it works. And as you can see, yes, it does. And it's about as efficient as we can get. If this was helpful, please like and subscribe. If you're preparing for coding interviews, check out neatcode.io. It has a ton of free resources to help you prepare. Thanks for watching and hopefully I'll see you pretty soon.